Let's go elsewhere in Cambridge now and bring on another Harvard professor, the eminent geneticist and serial biotech entrepreneur George Church, who received LSE's Genius Award in 2018 for his pioneering work in mapping the human genome. Tonight, Dr. Church is one of our COVID challengers. Dr. Church, are you there? George? All right. How's your science going during COVID? Yeah, so some labs uh, had to shut down during the lockdown. Ours, uh, um, w since we were working on virology and immunology, we pivoted to, to uh, various aspects of COVID research, including uh, vaccines. And uh, we also continued any work that was computational because uh, that could be done from home. Tell me about the candidate COVID vaccine that you're testing on yourself. Yeah, so we have an, a number of uh, projects that are aimed at uh, conventional, um, you know, FDA-approved clinical trials. And uh, the RADVAC approach is to kind of be more transparent about the process by which you go from an idea to one of those clinical trials and to... Um, demystify vaccines for, for the public. Mm -hmm. And so we published it as a recipe and, uh, and we tested it uh, on uh, the scientists, on ourselves, as has often been the case for uh, vaccines past and present. It's just people aren't typically as transparent about it. Didn't Louis Pasteur test the rabies vaccine on himself? There's hundreds of examples, um, yellow fever. Exceptional would be the ones where you have evidence that there was not tested on one of the um, really? people involved. Is this the first vaccine you've tested on yourself? Uh, yes, it is. I mean, it's, first of all, this is very uh, more user-friendly in the sense it's a nasal uh, um, squirt. Uh, so it's like uh, many people will uh, give themselves a little squirt. Uh, while many people are not fond of needles, whether it's uh, self-administered or, or by uh, physicians. Uh, out of 207 vaccines that are in development right now for COVID, uh, only about uh, six of them are involved intranasal delivery. And ours is the only one that also involves uh, peptides and chitosan uh, as an adjuvant. How does your vaccine work? It's a uh, very, very high safety, low risk, because there's no um, viral particles involved at all. It's just little peptides, little pieces of proteins, not even whole proteins. And they're carefully selected from the literature um, as being uh, highly immunodominant. The delivery nanoparticle is chitosan-based. So chitosan is a, is a polysaccharide that is present in a lot of arthropods, insects, and shrimp, uh, and fungal uh, cell walls. And anyway, that makes nanoparticles. And so the combination of, of peptides, nanoparticles, and um, intranasal is what distinguishes this from all the other vaccines. Another nice thing about this vaccine is it's totally up to date. So some of the latest peptides in, um, that we're taking right now are uh, only two weeks old from the peer-reviewed literature. When do you think you'll know whether it's effective? I think we'll, we'll know for this particular cohort, uh, which is about 20 people, we'll know in, in a couple of months. The vaccine hasn't gone through conventional safety tests. Speak about the ethics of publishing the recipe and making it available. I'm a big fan of the FDA, and uh, this is not really an attempt to go around, uh, but to, uh, as a, as a pre-research step uh, and a way of um, uh, demystifying uh, for the public. To do that safely, you know, the, the benefits have to outweigh the risks. So some of the risks are getting exposed to uh, medical environments where there's a high density of, of patients. Um, that's one risk. Uh, getting the disease by a whole variety of, of means before the, vac before the official vaccines are approved is another risk. This category of using um, uh, chitosan with peptides uh, is something that's been fairly well vetted uh, to at least be safe. So, the, so really the, 
the worst case is it's not effective. And as long as, as long as no one's misrepresenting that or making a lot of money misrepresenting that, that is uh, not, a, not a huge risk to have something that's uh, safe but ineffective. Uh, we're hoping that this one's effective. It has a good chance of being more effective because if you do an intramuscular injection, that doesn't really necessarily provide you the immunity that you get um, you know, intranasal, which is much closer to the, the respiratory in infection uh, starting point. Should DIY vaccine efforts be regulated? Well, there are regulations about uh, use of drugs in general, and it includes DIY uh, in principle. Uh, I think it is um, reasonable to not spend a lot of money enforcing it when one individual is doing no harm to him or herself. You're technically in violation of the regulations, no? Um, prop, uh, yeah, I, it depends. So, so if you're not uh, distributing a drug uh, to any other, anybody else, and uh, and you're using things that are generally recognized as safe, then that would be uh, acceptable. Uh, if you're a little little bit off of that, then it would be a gray zone that would require uh, you know the legal insight that I don't have. Okay, that's fair. I wish you all the success with this. It would be wonderful for you and the world if the vaccine works. As always, thank you, Dr. Church. Yeah, take care.